somebody tell me what I've done wrong? Wishing and hoping and thinking and praying, planning and dreaming each night of your charms. It won't get you into the arms. So if you're looking to find the as soon as I go, Mr. Barry, how is she? I don't know. She's sleeping for the first time in hours. And kiss her and love her and show her that you care. She's exhausted. It stops for a minute and she drops off and then it starts again. She's coughing and coughing most of the night. All right. Hello there, Denise. How are you not feeling very well? Does it? Let's have a look at you. I'm going to take your temperature. All right. Open up. Good girl. We thought it was a cold and then her temperature went right. She had a bit of a cough. It got worse during the night. It won't stop. She can't breathe. Again. I think they've got this natural gas to every town in Britain by now. It has its compensations, though. It can be very demanding when he gets home. Still, the main thing is, I know I can trust him. He wouldn't look at another woman. Well, love's like that. She'll have to come into hospital. Get two pink off. You're sure? I haven't seen it before, but there's no doubt about what it is. And there is whooping cough around. I'm sure this is the first case we've had here, but there have been other outbreaks in your canal. But at Denise's age, I wouldn't have expected it. She has been immunising. No, she hasn't. Mr Rose? I've been running through today's list of operations with my nurses. Uh, this last operation... Problem, Matron? It, it was added this morning. Yes, that's right, by me. I see that, but actually it's... It, well, it's your name. Absolutely. I'm operating on myself. Is the uh, kitchen still serving breakfast? Yes. Good. Good. I'm starving. She has an isolation work. <laughs> you go with Denise, get her settled in. I'll be down later. She can have an injection now, can't she? That's what you do, isn't it? Or penicillin. Get up there quickly, Ken. I need some oxygen. I'm taking it down, Doc. Thanks, Alan. All set, ladies and gentlemen. Well, we're ready. Do we get an explanation, Mr. Rose? For what? Your name on the list. Oh, don't worry, old man. It'll be a local anaesthetic. Well within your capabilities. Obviously, operating on oneself out cold is beyond even my considerable skill. I've booked it. Julie, that's my friend at the travel agent. Thanks, Lizzie. Uh, I'll catch up with you. They're busy now. Main thing is she doesn't know. I can keep secret. Oh, what about the car? Have you got it? Yes, Lizzie, and that's part of the surprise. They're waiting for you in the isolation ward, Doctor. Right. That's fabulous. I, I haven't said a thing to anyone. Not a thing. When you find that you might Ingrown toenail. Quite simple, but these damn things hurt. I think after millions of years of evolution, the human body would have ironed out something so irritating. Will you kindly cast an eye on two good reasons why? Happy feet. I've got those happy feet. Give them a low down beat. I don't want an audience, nurse. Could you ask them to go? 
You old hypocrite. Beg your pardon. Of course you want an audience. Dr. Weather. What's your excuse? Well, it just occurred to me that you might want to witness, you know, if you decide to sue yourself for medical malpractice. Yeah. Other than that, it's just plain nosiness, really. In that case, do stay. There's no telling how long the coughing spasms will go on, and they will keep coming back for days, weeks. They do subside, but not for long. She'll get very little rest, and it will be exhausting for her. What are you going to do? You can't leave her like that. She's fighting the disease. Well, we can help her with oxygen. We can try and bring the fever down. But whooping cough is, once a child has it, it has to run its course. We thought we were doing the right thing. It was in the papers, and we saw a television programme. It said the vaccination caused brain damage in babies. They proved it. She'll get better. We can't worry about that now. She's in the best place. She will get better. And Denise says the vast majority of children do recover. But some don't. I argued with them for a year about this. I knew it had to happen. What am I saying? Of course it had to happen. That's why we've had this outbreak in the first place. I mean, they did tell you, didn't they? Oh, David, please. They did say why they didn't have her immunised. I didn't ask. I was surprised. But why wasn't the first thing on my mind? I'm sorry. Anger isn't exactly going to help Denise, is it? A little knowledge and the best of intentions. Believe me, that can be a very dangerous mix. Still, we've got two problems. One, what to do for Denise, and two, what to do about this outbreak of whooping cough that's just hit us. How many children have been immunised? Uh, not too many in the older age group. The Mr and Mrs Barry aren't going to be alone. There are still lots of kids due for it, so uh, we're going to have to push those forward urgently. I'll talk to Middleditch, get things moving. Um, I know what whooping cough is, but treating it... Well, there really is no satisfactory treatment for it. It really is a very distressing condition. In this case, all the more so, because, to be blunt, they're going to feel responsible. How is she? No change. Spasm's getting longer. She's got so little strength left. Oxygen. Do something. You've got to do something to save my baby. <laughs> Go. She's gonna die. We're going to be all right for vaccine. The health authority can provide more. But applying the if pigs had wings principle of management, we won't rely on them delivering the stuff. <laughs> so, Ken, if you would be kind enough to drive down to York and pick it up for us. This afternoon? Mm -hmm. Excellent. Now, Matron and I have spoken to all the primary schools in the area. And the simplest solution is to bring all the school-aged children who need immunisation into the hospital. We can do it in three days. It'll mean postponing anything that's not urgent, including surgery. Anything else? Transport. Well, the schools can make their own arrangements, but we'll still need to give some help. So if we can find some volunteers with cars, that should speed things up. I'll have a word with the hospital friends. I'm sure something can be arranged. Well, that's it. Thank you. Ah, Mr. Harper, the very man. Has there been a meeting? Indeed there has, Mr. Harper. And I'm sure you'll be delighted to hear that everything is on track to accelerate the whooping cough immunisation programme. The train is there, as it were, Mr. Harper, but without more supplies of the vaccine, we cannot get it out of the station. And that is where we are totally reliant upon you. Naturally, I'm standing by. Ah, good. 
I've spoken to the health authority. The vaccine is there in store, but getting it here is another matter. I know of only one man who can slice his way through all that departmental red tape. Mr. Harper, cometh the hour, cometh the man. Leave it to me. I'm sure I can get it to you by the end of the week. Well, I thought it might speed up things a bit if uh, Ken went down to pick it up himself. So if you could just tell them he's coming to pick it up this afternoon. It was a paediatrician who'd recorded several cases of encephalitis in babies after they'd had the whooping cough vaccine. The baby suffered from brain damage and he thought that the vaccine might be the cause. So, since there's no whooping cough, we shouldn't risk immunising against it. I see. And why wasn't there any whooping cough? Immunisation. Uh-huh. But was there any research on it, the brain damage? No, no, there wasn't. But to be fair to the man, I mean, I think he was only putting forward this information for his colleagues to think about. I think he was only just suggesting that there should be some research into it. But that's not what the papers got hold of, was it? Headlines everywhere. Whooping cough vaccine causes brain damage. But the vaccine take-up is pretty much back to what it used to be. Well, the Barrys wouldn't have it, would they? What they saw on the television, what they read in the newspaper, that's what they believed. As far as they're concerned, if you're a doctor, you must be talking out of the back of your... I'm sorry. David? I looked in on Denise last night. That hope we were talking of. Is there much left? No, she developed pneumonia. She didn't make it. So it's all a bit academic now. But I'll leave you lot to sort that out. Dr. Cheriton, Mr. and Mrs. Barry have come. I wish there was something I could say. I didn't believe it was for the best. We have to go home, Patrick. I can't. I can't go there. Her room. Her things. All. I know. I might as well have killed her, Doctor. I killed my daughter. That's not true. I'll always know it is. If there's anything we can do, you must let us know. I know it doesn't mean anything now, but we have known each other for a long time. You were right. Patrick, I didn't do enough. I didn't talk to you enough. I should have... I should have found the words. We haven't actually got the thing yet, but they're closing down St. Columbus next month. The place is already empty. Some of their equipment is definitely not the property of the health authority, including the iron lung. That was bought by the hospital trust. Jerry Stembridge is fairly sure that he can persuade them to let us have it. Could so easily be us closing too. Well, that's what the health authority wanted. 
Ken and Alan are getting a room ready. Aye. But apart from you, me, Ken and Alan, nobody else must know what's going in there. Oh, I'm as bored by these games as anybody else. But we do have our friend Mr Harper with us. And as far as he is concerned and the powers that be at the Health Authority, acquiring an iron lung is an expansion of the hospital resources. And that is strictly verboten. They can't actually close us down, but they're hoping we'll wither away. There is, however, one other reason. One rather closer to all our hearts. Dr. Ormerod. Mm. The iron lung will mean that he can bring his wife back home. But I don't want to raise his hopes prematurely and then have to dash them down. So the only remaining problem is how to keep our friend Harper's attention diverted. Come in. Mr. Harper. Mr. Middleditch. Matron. I'll leave you to it. You come bearing gifts? It's a serious problem. Oh, not another one, Mr. Harper. Are you not allowed down there? It's a stairs. And you're not allowed in here. What are you doing to me work? Well, there's only one P in operation, so um, I decided to cross it out. Go back with the others. Fine. Where is the teacher? She lost one. She's had to go find him. The parable of the lost sheep always had me wondering whether the shepherd wouldn't have been better to write off the lost one and concentrate on not losing the rest. You are here to benefit from a miracle of modern medicine, not to behave like the savages you undoubtedly are. It's not that I don't like children. It's just that normally I can only eat one at a time. Firmness is all with children. Oh, oh you all right, Mr. Rose? Perfectly all right, thank you. Is there any reason why I shouldn't be? <coughs> Mr. Harper, judgments about the mobility of our patients, as so many other things, are not about figures on a balance sheet. This decision has been made. My recommendations have been accepted. One ambulance will go. It's madness. By my reckoning, it would be cheaper to use a taxi firm for any cases of exceptional difficulty. I don't know what the numbers are. That's very interesting, Mr Harper. What is? A taxi firm to replace non-essential transport. Outpatients. As you say, we don't know numbers and hence costs. But I would have thought that a logistical exercise to find out might be right up your street. I could certainly come up with something. And it would be useful to show the health authority the real savings of a scheme like this. And who knows? It could set a precedent for savings in other hospitals. In a large general hospital, I can only... I've got a lot to do. It's OK, it's Mr Middleditch. Any news? I'm still waiting, Ken, but I'm sure we'll get the iron lung. Well, it'll mean a lot to Dr. Ormer, will Yes, it certainly will. You're keeping our friend Harper at bay? Well, he's not been nosing around. Well, he's quite busy at the moment, and I'm hoping we can keep him even busier. Ken, haven't you got a cousin that runs the taxi business? Aye, Josh. Well, he's chairman of the Taxi Association. Yes, that's what I thought. Mr. Harper is going to be contacting every taxi firm in the area. He's looking for a quote on a job, hospital transport, a sort of long-term contract. What do you mean? Well, the details are unimportant, but it's the sort of thing that could be quite lucrative. Drivers might be tempted to put in a competitive quote. Now, it would be very helpful to the hospital if nobody's quote was, um, well, shall we say, too competitive. So you'd like them to be a little on the high side? Well, <laughs> I don't suppose there's any real chance of that there. Come in. I'm taking an hour out. Got to make a couple of calls. Okay. 
Oh, you won't, uh, you won't forget about Mrs Lyons, will you? I know. Asthma attack. At least I'm too early for a gin and tonic and, um, chat with that dog. I'm really not in the mood. Lizzie says she was a bit shaky and, uh, you know what she's like with that inhaler. She never got it with her, so just make sure it's handy, will you? OK. I was getting away from the kindergarten for a bit of peace. Well, I enjoy it while you can. There's another five schools in this afternoon. How's it going? Another two days. I'm sorry about the girl. Yeah. It's going to be a long haul for the parents. We'll all spend a lot of time telling them it's not their fault. They'll spend a lot of time not believing us. I don't know what it's going to do for our doctor-patient relationship. Maybe you shouldn't tell them it's not their fault, then. So I tell them that it is? From what I've heard, they made a decision that played a part in their daughter's death. It's not that simple, but it's there. They have to come to terms with it. It's not really your business how it's for them. At the moment, I feel none of it should be my business. A deep and philosophical reflection on your life or just feeling sorry for yourself? <laughs> a walk? A walk. See you tonight. Oh, Mum, mates. Well, I guess we all are just now. Sorry. What for? Your arm, your girlfriend. Just tell her I'm a child of the universe and it's the age of Aquarius. <laughs> well, no one told me about her, the way she lied. Well, no one told me about her, how many people cried. But it's too late to say you're sorry. How would I know? Why should I care? Mrs. Lyons! Please don't bother Stop the trying to find her. She's not there. Well, let me tell you Did Mrs. Lyons go out? Car's here. Yeah. It's just she called the hospital. It's her asthma. I can't get an answer. Is it an emergency? Well, I'm sure it's not. I just need to see that she's all right. Right. Uh, I'll be down here, Doc. If it is an emergency, just give us a shout. Well, no one told me about her. What could I do? Well, no one told me about her. Well, they all knew. But it's too late to say you're sorry. How would I know? Why should I? Mrs. Lyons! Please don't bother. Dr. Omarov! I borrowed a bad. key. Well, let me tell you about the way she looked, the way she acted, the color of her hair. Her voice was soft and good, her eyes were clear and bright, but she's not there. Your place just off. Get ready for the doctor. Sure. Okay, good girl. Come in. I, I'm sorry to disturb you, but I wanted to say I got in a bit of a panic earlier with my asthma, but it's cleared up. 
I've told Lizzie at reception. I'm sure she'll catch Dr. Ormerod on his calls. Well, you really didn't need to come to the hospital. Oh, my friend Dolly was coming anyway. She dragged me into a meeting of hospital friends about transport for parents and children, for vaccination. She's quite right. Well, I won't keep you. You look a lot happier, even if you don't think you do. Smile, an everlasting smile. Her smile can bring you me to me. I'll file those for you. Thanks, Lizzie. Do you like surprises? What? I love surprises. Makes me go all romantic. And you never know when a surprise is just round the corner, do you? No. It's not that I haven't faced death before, even with young children. It always hits you hard. I guess the day it doesn't, I should give up and drive a lorry for a living. But it's different here. I know these people. I knew Denise. I treated her for earache, a sprained wrist when she fell off a new bike. First time that it's hit. It's hard. And it's like, it goes on, doesn't it? Patrick and Jane Barry are still my patients. What's happened is a part of that now. Why is that a problem? Well, maybe it's just that I'm not good at all that. I mean, in a general hospital... They walked out through the door and you never saw them again. Well, thanks for putting it like that. How would you put it? Horses for courses. So you're a lousy GP because you feel too much. Wow. Who's the child of the universe now? If I pay for this, would I get a bit less sarcasm? Nope. Self-indulgence always gets the same treatment from me. Lucy, it's not all about me. If I can deliver as a hospital doctor, that's fine. I think I can. I even think I'm good at it. But I have to deliver different things as a GP. If I can't, I don't see what's self-indulgent about asking the question. The people it's going to affect are my patients, right? Better, anyway. Real questions. You're out of the wallowing phase. his finger out, I see. No, he's still on the phone. We drove down there and picked it up. I signed his name on the phone. So what he's doing, he's already done. It would have saved him a lot of time. Well, actually, I would much rather he didn't. In fact, you might not get around to telling him that the vaccine is already here. Well, we rarely seek him out, Mr. Middleditch. You surprise me. Now, about the taxes. All right, yeah, well, he'll get the same figure from everyone. In fact, he's already been on to me cousin about a guideline price. Mr. Harper felt it was a little bit on the steep side. Oh, dear. Well, I think I've got a little surprise for Mr. Harper on that score, too. On the iron lung? Iron lung. Ah, yes, yes. Now, look, it's, it's all arranged at last. You drive up to Maddleskirk, St. Columbus, this evening, but you bring it back late tonight, very late. That way, there's no danger of our friend being here. He has to sleep sometime, I presume. Yeah. Well, we're not quite sure. I can't hear you, Doctor. We're still full of kicks this end. Lizzie. I've got a bit of a problem. And there's a sort of buzzing at yours. Yeah, it is like a growl. A growl is what it was. You'll have to say it again. Where are you? Right, all the children from St Joseph's, form a line, please, and follow Staff Nurse Taylor. Who did you want to talk to, Dr Omerod? Come on, quickly. What sort of dog? The breed is, uh, frankly, beside the point, Lizzie. I can't get out. I need someone to find Mrs Lyons. Sister, I've got Dr Omerod on the phone. Yes, yes. Dr Omerod. He says he's in a woman's flat with a big dog and he can't get out. What should he do? See, I don't know what you're talking about. And I haven't got time to find out. Oh, I still haven't got the booking form, Doctor. Your hotel. For the surprise? Yeah, I'm sure it's fine, Lizzie. She doesn't know. She's got no idea. When I mentioned a surprise earlier, there was no reaction, you know. But the hotel is confirmed. I've got the details here somewhere. It's a lovely place. It's so romantic. <laughs> Well, it is. Doctor, are you ready for these children now? On my way. 
Dr. Omerod. Dr. Wetherill was wondering where you are. She says to say it was snowed under here. Lizzie, in words of one syllable, I am trapped here by a large dog. I need help now. I've got Dr. Wetherill. You best talk to her. I've got Dr. Omerod on the phone. He's got a problem with a dog. I think it must be the same one as before. I thought you'd gone for a call, not an afternoon off. <laughs> well, it's not funny, Jill. I've been here for an hour. He's going. He's gone. He's gone. This is a surprise. It's years since I found a strange man in my bedroom. I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> I'm covering for one of the Ward sisters. I'm sorry I can't stay. Don't worry, I'm fine. You seem very down. I've just got a bit to think about. Well, I'm only going to be sitting on the ward. If you want to talk. I've been thinking too hard. Maybe it's just a bit of self-indulgence Lucy accused me of. Well, I'm glad she knows what it is you're thinking so hard about. She certainly haven't told me. Well, what does that mean? Why well, do you need a degree in psychiatry to have a chat with you about your troubles? Still, it's not Lucy Klein's only qualification, is it? I have apologised, Dr. Ormrod. It was an unfortunate sequence of events. I was at the hospital. I spoke to the receptionist. I'm sorry you didn't get the message. What else can I say? The fact that I ended up trapped in your flat for an hour is really, really beside the point. Is it? It seems very much to the point. If your ego is bruised. This, this isn't a peculiar kind of entertainment, Mrs. Lyons. The truth is, you call us out too much. Now, sometimes there's a reason, and sometimes, to be honest, there just isn't. But we don't know. And because we don't know, I had to get into this flat just in case. You really are very angry. I'm a doctor. I don't like wasting my time. Well, I won't waste any more of your time. I'll be a great deal more careful about my asthma attacks in future. I know you have problems of your own, Dr. Omrod. Probably a lot of your patients' problems seem trivial by comparison. That's not what I mean. I'm sure you don't. But that doesn't mean it isn't true. It's a hard Do now? Just glum. What? Oh, quiet. Mr. Abbey. Working late. Hot Kirk. Well, time of tide, wet for Norman. The Grim Reaper. I see. And this is what passes for a coffin now. Well, oh, cutbacks. Isn't it on the big side? Well, it was a big lad, wasn't it, Alan? Aye, very big. You see, I think that's what did for him in the end. It was a lesson for us all. Well, carry on. I don't know where you got all that codswallop. It doesn't look like codswallop from where I'm standing. I was talking to Lucy about the Barrys, about how to handle them. It's difficult. You know how they must feel. Oh, come on, that's not quite true, is it? She's a nice woman. You get on with her, that's fine. But I suppose I get a bit... 
But when you shut me out, when something's hurting you or worrying you, you don't even tell me. How am I supposed to feel? I wouldn't mind. But the woman has the neck to make me feel guilty at the end of it all. Gordon, I know you far too well. I know that you're giving me the soft version of what you said to that woman. You, you cannot shut out what is happening to Caroline and what's happening to you. I think that it is colouring the way that you behave. I don't think that you'd normally have told that woman that she was wasting your time. You'd have to run in with that dog. I want to be careful about taking on Mrs Lyon. She has a way of getting inside people. She did it to me the other week and I really wasn't expecting it. Oh, what about? Oh, nothing, just things. Us? Yes, all right. Well, that's mainly what I've got running around inside my head, isn't it? So... <laughs> she knows. No, she doesn't know. She just has a way of making me look at myself. I don't know. Do you remember when we first went out, that first night? You told me why you wanted to work here, in this kind of hospital. I... I don't remember what I said. I do. And it's why I fell in love with you. I have got things to talk about. Things about what I'm doing. Working here isn't as simple as I thought, that's all. But I wanted to get things together so that it wouldn't ruin the weekend. What weekend? Well, it's a surprise. It was. Still is, most of it. You've been talking to Lizzie too much. She did help me organise it, yeah. Organise what? Oh, no, there are rules. Wouldn't be a surprise then, would it? How we feel isn't measured by what we do or what we don't do. I've fallen in love with you, John. And it's the same for you. I haven't known that for a long time. Don't even need to say it. It's just there. Nothing can change that. Not now. It's too late. I was saying it is more. It's a lot more. I just wish. No, I don't think I can take any more wishing today. What is, what isn't. I can't change any of that. All I do know is that I need you. Now. Don't tell me it's not the same for you. Stay in bed another half hour. <laughs> Hotel and Plateau in Grosby. This is Lizzie Cheriton. I didn't want to let you know until everything was in place. It's been difficult to know how to help Caroline in any real way. But now, at least, we can... I, uh... I don't know how you did it. 
My old pal, Jerry Stembridge, was happy enough to give the health authority one in the eye. I know how hard this must have been. Oh, it wasn't really. When things happen in our lives, in the lives of our friends. I'll leave you to it. Today. I am. Do I get a ride in it? Why, everyone's going to want to. I want to get in the queue first. Well, I tell you what, if you can get off at lunchtime, you can come with me. Oh. You did get us a great deal in that hotel. I'll be there. <laughs> Mr. Middleditch, I've been told a major new item of equipment has been brought into this hospital. An iron lung? The Royal is not an iron lung hospital. This is in clear breach of health authority decisions. And as for the expenditure... There was none. It came from the Cottage Hospital in Maddleskirk, St Columbus. It cost absolutely nothing. Hospitals can't just make private arrangements about shunting the authority's property around. Oh, I should think not, whatever next. But you see, it doesn't belong to the authority. It belongs to the Cottage Hospital Trust, and they have very kindly lent it to us. While you're here, Mr Harper, about that scheme for providing transport for non-essential patients, the elderly and so on. You mentioned something about a taxi firm. I'm still working on it. I've got some preliminary figures in. How much will we save? It's certainly a lot less than what it's currently costing for the ambulance you'll be losing. I'm sure I can get it lower. Uh, but about this iron lung... A good response from the taxi firms? I'm hoping to cast the net wider. The local taxis came in at a very uniform figure. Surprised, really. And rather more than I'd expected. You might like to look at some figures that I've come up with. It's the same sort of idea, really. But this figure says zero. That's right. It can't cost nothing. <laughs> well, actually, it can. I met the committee of the Friends of the Royal last night, and they're going to provide a permanent roster of volunteers with their own cars. They were delighted to help. Incidentally, I've sent this scheme up to the health authority. I think it's probably best that they see your figures and mine together, don't you think? <laughs> Hotel booked in Grassmere for the weekend. All you've got to do is pack. <laughs> so, going away for a few days, are you, to see your cousin? Tate, what are you doing here? You dropped this this morning. Hotel in Grassmere. For two. Mrs. Lizzie Cheriton. And is this Mr. Cheriton then, eh? No, yeah. Dr. Cheriton. Oh, well, that's something because he's going to need a doctor by the time I finish with him. <laughs> Put Dr. Cheriton down now. I booked it for Dr. Cheriton and Nurse Taylor, but they must have got it mixed up with my train ticket, you big chump. It's true. <laughs> anyway, I 
I didn't set out to talk to Lucy. She broached the subject, and I suppose it was easier to talk to someone I didn't really know. Someone who hadn't heard what a great GP I thought I'd make. And it's because, well, what you believed about me, it means too much. Oh, come on. If we can't talk, it's like you think I couldn't understand. It's not very fair. No, I'm sorry. So, what do you feel now? <laughs> like I've had some of the stuffing knocked out of me, <laughs> and like I needed to. I'd have laughed if anyone told me I got some romantic idea about medicine. But maybe there's just a little bit of truth in it. Does that help you? It does. It makes me feel I should get on with making sure I'm a better GP. And if the worst things get to me at times, well, I'll have to look on that as an occupational hazard. No. It's all part of being that good GP you are. That's why people trust you. Because they know you care. Walking wounded. At least he was until about ten minutes ago when he couldn't walk anymore. It seems it's his foot, Doctor. Bit of an infection. I was wondering if you, uh, <clears throat> might have a look at it. Well, I think I would go to the surgeon that operated on it. It's, uh... It's pretty shoddy work. It is rather painful. I'm sure it is. Right, well, best have a look at it then, eh? Hey? I suppose there is no way that we could keep this to ourselves, just between the three of us. No. Not a cat in hell's chance. You can take those off the walls. You're in a hospital, not the factory floor. I want them down. The district health authority saying they could have the meeting he'd requested this evening. What's he up to? Peter, are you okay? What's happening? What am I doing here? <laughs> <laughs> 